bright suns, that means hello and Batu. We are at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge inside Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World. And today we're going on Smuggler's Run. I'm gonna show you this ride in detail you've never seen before. I'll show you everything from the perspective of a plus size person or someone who has accessibility, mobility, cognitive or sensory concerns. We'll also cover information about strollers and young kids. We'll talk about height restrictions. We'll see the leg room on the ride, the restraints, the seats, and we'll even try to find out if there's any special devices that can be used by people who have hearing or vision concerns to help enhance their experience. Welcome to Pammy Plus Parks. I am Pammy, your plus size fairy godmother, and I'm super excited to bring you here with me on Smuggler's Run and show you everything you need to know to make the best decisions for you and your family regarding this ride. Now my goal today is to actually go on this ride two times. Um, I wanna go through the single rider line and show you what that's like. There are some steps in there and I'd like to show you that. Then I'd like to go in the regular standby line so you can see things from a cognitive and sensory perspective. But before we get in line, I have a couple things I need to share with you. Let me tell you a little bit about myself to help you make the decisions you need to make about this ride. I am five feet four inches tall. I weigh 327 pounds and I wear US women's sizes 28 or a floor 5X. I also don't have any major mobility concerns but I am on the high end functioning of the autism spectrum so some lights and sounds do affect me. I also want to let you know my husband has epilepsy and I've actually learned to go through rides and sort of pre-screen them for him to let him know if there's anything on the ride that will affect him so we'll be looking out for that as well so my friends who have vision and hearing concerns you'll want to check in with some cast members like the ones you see here and they'll be able to get you any equipment that you need for listening devices or anything that will help you follow along by reading the text of the script of what's going on on the ride. Now because it's the pass holder preview, those devices aren't ready right now, but they, they should be by the time the ride opens to the public. One of the things that I recommend that you do before you come to Star Wars Galaxy Edge is to check in with guest relations and see if there's any equipment you need to pick up there and get further details and information at that spot. If you would like more information about Walt Disney World Disability Services, phone 407-650-2547, or you can email disability.services at disneyparks.com. Walt Disney World also has disability services websites for hearing and sight. Follow the links you see on screen or the links down below in the description of this video. Let's have a quick look at the warning board for this ride before we get on so we know what we need to be aware of. For safety, they ask that you're in good health and free from high blood pressure, heart, back, or neck problems, motion sickness, or other conditions that could be aggravated by the mission. And expectant mothers should not fly. Children under the age of seven years must be accompanied by a person age 14 years or older. And persons who do not meet the minimum height requirement of 30 inches may not fly. Wheelchair and ECV guests must transfer to the seat of the ride. Stroller and ECV parking is just outside the exit of the ride. Strollers are not allowed in the ride, but wheelchairs and ECVs are. You don't have to bring your ECV in if you don't want to. Here's where you'd park it. Currently during the pass holder preview, there is a 30 minute wait time for standby. But we're gonna try single rider and see if that's even faster. Off we go to single rider. I will say there's a breeze in here and it's nice and cool. It's creepy because I'm by myself though. <laughs> wow, this is a long, long hallway. <laughs> Here we go. These are the steps leading up in the single rider line. If you have mobility concerns that make it difficult for you to take steps, or if you're in a wheelchair or ECV, you will not be able to do the single rider line. Here's a, another set of steps. Once you reach the top of the stairs, you're greeted by a cast member who will assign you your boarding group. And then, you walk right into the Millennium Falcon 
and into an area that you're going to be very familiar with if you've seen any of the films. And believe it or not, your wait in this area is really, really brief, maybe two or three minutes. And the next thing you know, they'll be calling for your crew to get in line and get ready to board the ride. I do want to mention that this chess table that you see, the space chess table that's in there is accommodating to large groups of people and super accommodating to plus size people. Once you finish with this area in the main lounge area of the Millennium Falcon, you actually go and see a little bit of a video featuring Hondo kind of explaining what your mission is going to be. You will be intercepting a first order training shipment of gold. And then after that quick video, you immediately load into the cabin. Okay, so right over here to the left is the transport device that will transport. You can transport from your wheelchair into the seat of the ride. And here is a crate for your service animal. There are six seats in the cabin and there are no armrests and one lap belt that you pull out. I was able to grab this lap belt and pull it out all the way over my head and have some excess dangling. So I would say the average length of these belts is between seven and eight feet long. I was able to go on this ride three different times and sit in all three positions and pull out the belt for each one of those positions. The belts for the pilot position or the front seat are just a few inches shorter than the ones for the gunners and engineers. I found that in pulling the belt all the way out, even in the shortest length in the front seats, I still would have had enough room in that belt to put another average size person with me under the belt. I've had a lot of plus size people reach out to me who tried this ride in California and here in Orlando, and they told me that at over 400 pounds, they had no issue. I also witnessed people who looked as though they may weigh in the 500 pound range who rode this ride without any issues. You see, just as I promised my friend, well, that the resistance that's what they need may be a little something for comfort. I guess that's okay. I mean, she came back owing me money, so that's pretty good there. Can you take one quick picture? Yeah. Just want you guys to see how long this belt is. It is super long. That was crazy. <laughs> so the ride was absolutely amazing. You do get bounced around a lot. <laughs> One of the things I noticed from this ride is that the engineer seats in the very back actually have fold down arms. So if you feel like you want a little more stability because you don't want to be bounced around as much, that's a good spot to ask to sit. It looks like this screen is kind of like a 180 degree screen that kind of comes over your head, almost as far as where the gunners sit, the center seats. And uh, that could be tough for people who have sensory concerns. Now the vehicle I rode on was the accessible vehicle. It just has a wider doorway to allow a wheelchair to go all the way in to make transferring a little easier. This is the accessible wheelchair elevator right here that leads right over here down to the vehicle that I was on, which was the accessible vehicle. If you are not using a mobility device and you feel like you can take the stairs to leave, you will be taking about three flights of stairs to get down to the exit of this ride. So for single rider, during the pass holder preview, I waited about five minutes to get on the ride. The ride itself is about four minutes long. But here's the accessible elevator that takes you down from the vehicle out towards the exit. I did learn that although you can take your ECB through that standby line, you can't take it into the ride vehicle, even the accessible vehicle. It's just too large. However, they do have 
a wheelchair standing by and there was one up there when I was at that accessible vehicle. So you can get out of your ECB into a wheelchair, have the wheelchair pushed into the vehicle, then transfer from the wheelchair into the seat. Okay, so for that first ride, I was a gunner. Let's hit the standby line, take a look and see if there's anything in there that we need to be concerned about from an accessibility, cognitive, sensory standpoint, and take another shot at this ride. Are we don't have time, but he's got cute little webbed feet and the biggest eyes you've ever, whatever it is, leave it alone. Wow, look at the Millennium Falcon. This part of the queue is sort of indoor outdoor. There's the outdoors where the Millennium Falcon is right behind me, and indoors is just ahead. Wow, we got a workshop under here. <laughs> Amazing. Here we have a ramp. Not too steep. Should be easy enough for your ECB or wheelchair. Looks like there's inclines and ramps throughout. This could be something you'll want to be aware of if you're pushing someone in a wheelchair. Danger alert Alpha Beta! There are stormtroopers in the docking bay! So there's sound, there is light, there's a lot going on. Wow, I love this view you get of the Millennium Falcon from the second story here. Amazing. That should do. Hello, hello, my friends. I am Hondo Onaka, and this is Onaka Transport Solutions. Today, I am offering the opportunity of a lifetime. I need flight crews to transport this valuable merchandise across the galaxy. Pilots to navigate, engineers to operate the ship, and gunners to defend the shipments. And that is where you come in. One of the cast members told me that once you get past this like gangplank area here and you're into the actual Millennium Falcon in that area where they have the chessboard and stuff, there can sometimes be a little bit of flashing light. And if that's the case, if you're afraid of having that flashing light, let them know, let a cast member know, and they can actually arrange for that to not happen. So that if you have someone in your party who has sensory concerns, they can still come with you in the queue. They can still enjoy that part of this experience and not have to worry about sensory concerns. Speaking of sensory concerns, there's tons of noises, tons of light. You really feel like you are immersed in the ride on this ride. It is the screen really surrounds you. There's lots of sounds. For people who have severe sensory concerns, this could be an issue. But at the very least, you can come through the queue, have this experience, actually get on the Millennium Falcon, enjoy that portion of it, and then exit before getting on the ride. Right, pilot. Push the flashing button to take off. Pilot on the left. Move your stick to fly right and left. I was just about to say that. Pilot on the right. Pull back on the stick to fly out. And push forward to fly down. Pilot made the jump to light speed. my camera and enjoy this ride for myself but you guys stick around I've selected a few really awesome videos for you so take a look at them and learn more about Disney from the perspective of a plus-size person and people with cognitive sensory mobility and accessibility concerns